From Television City in Hollywood, the Red Skelton Hour. much, ladies and gentlemen. I, I feel good tonight because it's really beautiful out here in California now. The clouds finally broke and the smog came through. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot, a lot of uh, things have happened this week. I see where Elizabeth Taylor, is she getting fed up with men? She's going to try countries now. <laughs> Poem. I got a poem. Elizabeth Taylor, with an axe, cut off her income tax. <laughs> she said she did it for Richard Burton, but her bank account ain't a hurting. <laughs> and I see with this little, and that Bunch of Jello got married, you know. She got married. She married her own agent. <laughs> Boy, some of those agents won't settle for 10% of anything. <laughs> they ask her how many children she's going to have. She said, I'm going to have my own Mickey Mouse club. <laughs> Funny, they all turn out to be rat things. <laughs> medical profession, they're not too happy with the Medicare. I see in the paper where there's going to be a big doc strike. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I see the president, the Congress is now open, the President Johnson has a really a good thing going for him this session. He's got so many Democrats in the Senate that yesterday Lady Bird sneezed and Lyndon says, Gesundheit, and they passed it 98 to 2. <laughs> And there were two guys out in the front yard at, at, the, in, at the White House, <laughs> and they were cleaning up around there, and a piece of paper blew through the window. And he ran in, and he came back out, and he said, you get it? He said, no, he signed it. <laughs> <laughs> and did you hear President Johnson's State of the Union message, otherwise known as the slowest drawl in the West? <laughs> <laughs> and oh, he made one big, th one big statement. He's determined to get rid of air pollution. Well, president or no president, I'm not quitting television. <laughs> informal at the, at the inauguration this year. The, instead of the 110-piece United States Marine Band playing Hail to the Chief, they're going to have Homer and Jethro on a kazoo. <laughs> and then comes the inaugural ball, and the president the band will play their, his favorite number. His favorite song is Dancing in the Dark. <laughs> <laughs> kind of sneaks up and just laughs. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't mind laughs, but oh... <laughs> Hey, you know, he's so hepped up about saving electricity. Yesterday, he overslept, see, until about 9 in the morning. He looked out the window and he yelled, All right, who turned the country on? <laughs> you know, that's a wonderful name, the inaugural ball. You know why they call it the inaugural ball? The Democrats go to the inaugural and the Republicans stay home and ball. <laughs> and this year, Sophia Loren is coming all the way to the, to, from Rome to be with President Johnson. And he has only one thing to say to Barry. Eat your heart out. <laughs> and you know who else is going to be at the, at the inaugural ball? Is Carol Channing. You know Carol Channing? She's the one that sings like Senator Dirksen talks. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wouldn't it be great?
great if Senator Dirksen was on the program. I can just hear him now. You know, he's standing there. Always looks like he got out of a windstorm, see? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me to here to this suspicious occasion. <laughs> On behalf of the Republican Party, and I'd like to be half of the Republican Party. <laughs> Come to think of it, I am. Hey, Gertrude, Gertrude Hickman, I got a joke for you. Gertrude, they were talking. She said, boy, I'm sure glad the good weather is, is coming around to California. I'm glad the sun came back from Florida. For five days, I thought somebody was stealing my eggs and come to find out I was laying ice cubes. <laughs> he said, well, I'm glad the weather's getting better because I'm flying back to the inauguration. He said, you don't brag. He said, I'm going to the inauguration myself with Mrs. Johnson and Linda Johnson. He said, you're going with Lady Bird and Linda Bird? He said, certainly. Us birds are going to stick together. <laughs> Hey, you know, one thing about America, though, and it's the greatest thing about our country, is once something has been settled, they all pull together. I'd like to show you what I mean now by doing a pantomime of the little old Republican watching the inaugural parade. <laughs>
and Archie Moore in The Seven Year Wretch. George Appleby, you're going in there if I have to drag you. Now here, in the car, let go of my subpoenas. Let go! George, what's keeping you? I can't cross the street till the light changes. It's a good thing this suit had two pair of pants. <laughs> yeah, I wish we didn't have to come down here. It's embarrassing. Guys, if I could just find some way to make some money. George, you're nothing but a loafer. You're even too lazy to pick up your unemployment check. Look, I don't like to pick it up because it's dangerous. On the way home, somebody liable to hit me over the head and take it away from me. Who? You. <laughs> All right, come on. Get over here and get the application and get in line. Okay. Quickly. Get the pen. Here's my apple pen. There you go. All right. Now, right back in line. Hurry up. Let's see. Name. George Appleby. Well, at least you know how to spell your name. Yeah. Maybe I can get a job with the government. <laughs> <laughs> now, who shall we notify in case of death? Me. I'd like to be the first one to know. <laughs> Boy, you can tell this is the unemployment office. Even this pen don't work. <laughs> Yeah, now I'll have to use a pencil. Yes, sir. I come here to pick up a check for my manager, Frankie Davis. Oh, yes, that's the party we sent on a job interview. Yes, I And I'll uh, have to have your name, please. My name is Archie Moore, yes. the old-time prize fighter. And your age? Undetermined. <laughs> I forgot his coat. He's Archie Moore. Oh, yeah. George, you're nothing but a yellow belly. Well, it matches the streak down my back. <laughs> you the gentleman with the leaky bomb pin? Oh, yes, but I... Uh, look, I, anything I can do there, can I get you a, a new coat, two new coats, one for each muscle? You got more to lift than Cassius Clay. Uh, here. I like to keep it right where it is, too, on the outside of my teeth. Yeah. <laughs> you're not going to hit me, are you? No, I was offering you my pin. There's a pin in there? Yeah, look around and see. Good heavens, the last time I saw anything that size, it was hanging in a smokehouse. <laughs> Is that the pit? <laughs> oh, let me get you a coat, will you, buddy? Listen, don't worry about the coat. Yeah. With all the relatives I set up in business, there's somebody by being dry clean. <laughs> Your check, Mr. Moore. Oh, thank you, sir. Uh, uh, Mr. Moore, how come your manager is unemployed? Aren't you working? Well, let's put it this way. In my business, when you knock out all the opposition, then you're out of business. <laughs> yuck, yuck. Yeah. Uh, That's what it says on the card, yuck, yuck. <laughs> George, uh, I don't get it. Neither do I, but if Archie Moore reads it way, I'm not going to disagree with him. <laughs> Nice with you, sir. Oh, well, thank you, sir. That's what... <laughs> For heaven's sakes, don't ever take a job milking a cow. <laughs> Boy, you would turn him inside out. <laughs> well, good day, y'all. Good day, y'all. Uh, good good day, Mr. Moore. Good well, day. yes, I'll see you later, George. I've got an appointment at the beauty park. Well, I hope it takes this time. <laughs> <laughs> Close the door, bear. Come on. Over here, Buster. You wait right here, and I'll go over and get the unemployment form. Uh, 
Here, lady, here, here, here. Now, you're in my place. I was Nick, madam. Boy, these rich dames are all alike, boy, all I'll right. tell you. Just because they got a fur coat, they think they can step in and take your place. <laughs> Boy, with a face like that, you must have bought that coat yourself. <laughs> Boy, what a lousy fit. Look at that lovely necklace she's wearing. <laughs> you have an unfortunate personality with a breath to match. <laughs> Boy, must be a wino. <laughs> no, she's a fish <laughs> Look, lady, now out of my way, because I'm Nick. Hey, stop shoving my bear. You're a bear what? <laughs> bear. <laughs> you mean that's a uh, real for real, real, real for real bear? Take it from me. I don't have to take it from you. He explains it much better. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how come you're unemployed, Smokey? You in between forest fires? Who's, where's his Nelson Eddie hat? This is Buster the Boxing Bear. A boxing bear, say? Boy, he don't have to throw a punch. He's got muscles in his breath. <laughs> Not if his dance card will ever get filled. I... <laughs> Stop that with your nose. What's he trying to do? Break the handkerchief habit? <laughs> No, no, no. He likes you. Oh, he does? You know something? You ought to buy him. He could make a lot of money for you. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. You know something? It doesn't cost much to keep him, either. He don't? No. All winter long, he hibernates. <laughs> hibernates, huh? Well, you gotta do something in the winter to keep warm, you know? <laughs> Yeah, and it doesn't cost much to feed him, either. It don't? No. All he eats is raw fish, dried roots, and dead tree bark. Oh, he'd love my wife cooking. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. That's a good one, huh, Bear? <laughs> hey, what is he, a critic or a fighter? <laughs> a small investment, you can make yourself a fortune. Yeah. He kind of likes me, don't he? Uh, well, what would I tell Clara? I'll take him. But look, if Clara asks you if you're a bear, you say no and then jump back. <laughs> I said, uh, business over here, I'll pay you. Now, good, good, good. Now, if only I can get rid of Cheetah. <laughs> with you. I'll tell you. <laughs> Clara comes in. You got to be real quiet. See, I've got to break the news to Clara. <laughs> Careful. Don't, 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 don't sneeze. You spread germs. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, no wonder you missed the handkerchief. <laughs> Looks like a petticoat for a pizza. <laughs> Look, you better hide, because I got to break you to her a little at a time, boy. Now lay down on the floor, and she'll think you're a lumpy rug. <laughs> George Appleby, look at the time. Yeah, how about that? Where have you been? Where's your unemployment check? Now, I spent it on something, sweetie pie. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. And why should I close my eyes? So you can't see where to hit me. <laughs> Dreamer? No! <laughs> Boy, is right, yeah. <laughs> Boy, your knuckles have got 20-20 vision. <laughs> George Appleby, don't tell me you spent that money on this phony bed. Easy, Tom. Easy. Swear it. Gee, kind of thick. I wonder what it's stuffed with. <laughs> you keep on kicking, it's going to be stuffed with you. <laughs> of all the stupid things to spend your heart. Employment check 
job of broken down, moth eaten, flea bitten. <laughs> Don't try to make up, George. <laughs> For heaven's sake, go shave. <laughs> Human would put his arms around you, yeah. Now listen, before I lose my temper, you get this glandular chipmunk out of here. Clara, this is Buster, the boxing bear. Oh, hi, Buster. Now get him out. Ah! I don't want to talk to you. Look, we can make a lot of money with him at carnivals. Ah. Yeah, we're making some fortune fighting people. Are you kidding? Who ever heard of a boxing bear? Well, there was Max and Buddy and all of them. <laughs> Look, wait. <laughs> you hear that? You hear that? He heard the bell and he came out fighting. I tell you, we'll make a, we'll make a fortune with... <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah, wait a minute, I'll ask him. Uh, can you can you keep your dentist appointment tomorrow? Yeah, but there'll be three less teeth to clean. <laughs> okay, fine. Thank you. Goodbye. All right, now listen, George, I've got to go to the market now and shop for dinner. Now, what would you like for dinner? Uh, anything but bell peppers. Oh, all right. Wait a minute, uh, what kind of pepper? Bell, bell, ding dong. <laughs> <laughs> Here, that's just about enough out of you. I'm going to... I'm going to take you to the circus and let you fight at Barnum and Bailey. <laughs> you thought I was going to say Ringling, didn't you? <laughs> hurry, 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 hurry. Now, step right up, folks. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. For $5, I'm going to give you a chance to win $100. All you have to do is to stay in the ring for one round with Buster, the boxing bear. Hey, hey there, uh, I'll take a crack at that thar bear. Not there, bear. <laughs> Gromer Pyle's brother. <laughs> Here's my five dollars. Boy, that's sure been in there a long time. Look at Lincoln blink his eyes. <laughs> Now, all right, now remember, sir, all teeth are not a call for and 30 days belong to the management. We sell them to Elks. <laughs> <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, the undefeated champion! <laughs> weighing 138 and 76 pounds and a hog! The idol of the fight, I got you, I got you, I I just want to see if you're paying attention. <laughs> The idol of Yellowstone Park, Badly Buster! Oh, now you fellas, come here. You know the light, you know the rules, you know all the rules. <laughs> come here, Buster. Why don't you get the rules now? I want you fellas to have a good, clean fight. Now, there'll be no hitting below the tail. <laughs> And no biting in the clinches, because he has very tender clinches. All right. Let's get the robe off there. <laughs> you know, when you wear shorts with lace on them, you got to fight. <laughs> get out of here. Get out of here. All right, now, Clara, ring the bell. All right. He didn't even say goodbye. <laughs> Here we are. Here's your share of the take. One barracuda. <laughs> now, anybody else want to make $100 the easy way? And it cost you $5 to try. Is this offer open to anybody? You bet, buddy. Step right up into the ring. <laughs> Step right up. Who said that? <laughs> How many times have I told you not to eat coconuts in the ring? <laughs> I'll give you 10 bucks. If you pay off 200. Well, now, you've got sporting blood, and spectators step back, or you're going to have it all over you. <laughs> I'm about 50 bucks to win 1,000. 50, you've got a deal, brother. Now, you just tell us where you live, and the bear will, will, will hit you home. <laughs> I ain't going to fight him. I'm just the manager. Just stay here. Okay, Archie. Archie Moore. Archie. Archie.
Archie. Oh, Bear, I'm listening. Yeah. <laughs> it's the bear. Oh, I don't like fighting animals, uh, George, but sooner or later you run out of people. Then what do you do? <laughs> Oh, for heaven's sakes, look at those humps. What did you have for dinner? <laughs> Camel burgers? <laughs> Come on, Buster. Go over there and meet your next opponent. <laughs> Come back here. Come back here. <laughs> well, Archie O'Pile, here's your money back because the fight's been called off. Call on account of foul. What foul? The bear turned chicken. <laughs> See, a deal is a deal, Mr. Appleby. Yeah. And I'm going to fight somebody if it's only you. Oh, no, oh, no, no. Then I'll donate the money to fight against poverty. Oh, well, then I'll just keep it because I've been fighting poverty for years. <laughs> Look at your bright side. You get to sleep tonight early. Yeah, but I like to wake up tomorrow. <laughs> now, listen, George Appleby. Either you fight Archie Moore or you fight me. Okay, I'll meet you back in the ring in a half hour. And if I'm not here, you start without me. <laughs> Boy, you, you, you really built there. That, oh, well, that's nothing. Feel that muscle. Gee, you must eat a lot of jelly, and I don't feel anything. <laughs> you don't feel anything? Well, hold on. It'll swim by in a minute. <laughs> I'll flatten him. I'll flatten him. I'll beat him to a pulp. I'll knock him out of the ring as soon as he gets in. And what idiot wrote these lines? George, don't be silly. <laughs> <laughs> Atta boy. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Good heavens, a Liberace reject. <laughs> Let's do a little shadow boxing. Well, you better pick him up. I think you knocked him out. <laughs> His shadow's just laying there. There he goes. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, I hope I do all right. I'm a little out of shape. The world should be in this shape. <laughs> hey, fella, the champ wants to work out on a sandbag. Bring it down. <laughs> okay. Just don't have it no more. <laughs> okay, fellas. Take it up. Come on, champ. Let's get started. Here. George! George! Come to, darling! George! Georgie boy! Oh boy. I'll never take another punch like that. <laughs> Listen, George. You've got nothing to worry about. I have it? Nothing. You're gonna knock Archie Moore out in one round. Clara, you've been twisting your hair curlers too tight again. <laughs> Now, you see these gloves? Yeah. They're for Archie Moore. There's a horseshoe in each one of them. A horseshoe and a glove for Archie Moore? That's like giving Jane Manswell a foam rubber sweater. <laughs> you don't understand. The horseshoes are magnetized. As soon as he touches the gloves together, his hands are going to get stuck. He won't be able to fight, and you're going to knock him out. Oh, you're kidding me. No. Now, that's ridiculous. Now, how could gloves get magnetized? Go ahead. Wait and see. This. Mm. Now, they, they'll stick together, huh? Yeah. How? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sweetie pie, we've got it made. We've got it made with his hands like this. I can beat him fair and square. <laughs> <laughs> oh, help me get him out of here, will you? There you go. Hey. These are uh, for the champ, these gloves. And I hope they don't come to uh, become too attached to them. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Who sent for an undertaker? I am your last second. That's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> Yeah, I'll just 
no, no, no. <laughs> hey, old Archie's got a magnetic personality. Now he's got knuckles to match. <laughs> <laughs> the bell, the bell, the bell. <laughs> How'd you get over here so quick? Take a cab? Take a mule train. <laughs> Come on a mule train. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, um... <laughs> All right. <laughs> Come on, put your gloves together. Put them together. <laughs> no, you're not doing it right. How much I do it? <laughs> You're supposed to do it like that. <laughs> Is there anything I can do? Oh, just pray that I can get these gloves apart, will you? Well, here, allow me. <laughs> you know, you've got a soft heart. And a glass jaw. Here, <laughs> try it. Oh, no. I'd have seven years bad luck, boy. <laughs> George, if you don't knock him out, we're going to lose a thousand dollars. Oh, yeah, i got to hit him. Okay, well... Here it go. Come on, George. I'm not getting any younger. You know anybody that is? <laughs> <laughs> okay, here it goes. <laughs> I can fight like this till I'm a hundred, which I already am. <laughs> George, the round is almost over. Yeah, I, I'll get him now. Now. Okay, now you... <laughs> Wait a minute. You wouldn't hit the Statue of Liberty, would you? <laughs> This is going to be the easiest thousand bucks I ever made. No, no, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. I, you don't... Oh! <laughs> Come on. Hey, I'll pay you off. I'll pay you off. I'll pay you off. Oh, poor George. George! He only blew his land and all was on himself. What happened? What happened? You knocked yourself out. How do you like that? At last I'll find somebody that I can lick. Me! <laughs> hey. Ladies and gentlemen, the undefeated light heavyweight champion of the world, Mr. Archie Moore. We've got a sensational new young singer by the name of Shaney uh, Wallace. And uh, she's going to be on our show tonight. She's from England, and I thought you could help me make her feel at home. All right, what do we do? Turn around. Oh, look. You look like Keely Smith. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Shaney uh, Wallace. Shaney Wallace. Sheenie, you're from England, so we thought, Archie and I thought we'd make you feel at home and we'd be Beatles. Oh, oh I see. Well, do you know what we do to Beatles back in England? No. This. <laughs> Forget what I told you to say at rehearsal. Right? <laughs> I give up boxing for this. Very pretty little lady. As a matter oh, of fact, thank you. you sort of remind me of my daughter, Valentina. I do? Yes, very uh -huh. much so. I guess you have a lot of trouble fighting the boys off, huh? No, no, I don't have any trouble. No trouble? No. Well, I... <laughs> Mmm. Mmm. You take money, you'll never be back here again. <laughs> I thought you said you didn't have any trouble fighting off boys. No trouble. Who wants to fight? <laughs> With that kind of attitude, they'll always be in England. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, in this corner, at 110 pounds, Miss Shaney Wallace.
The Silent Spot, starring Red Skelton in The Escaped Convict.
Here he is again, Red Skelton. Thank you very much, and least to half of our sponsors and staff. May we thank you for allowing us to be a part of your evening. So until next week, we say goodbye for now, and may God bless. Good night. This is our Gilmore speaking.